What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we're ramping up for what I've said for quite some time, that Quantumania is going to be A, pivotal, and B, quite huge. Uh, we have, obviously, Kang, the Conqueror, in this trailer more so showing us what he is after what is the the dilemma that he is under that he requires the assistance of ant-man brian what for you is coming together as to what the rest of the mcu is going to be like in the next two years leading up to Secret Wars. What's so important about this film? What's so important about some of the uh, other clues that's been released in, this, in these recent trailers that has you excited and perhaps may prove me right yet again on a big possibility, Brian. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, it, it's interesting. Final trailers as final trailers go, I thought this one revealed a lot. I will be curious to see looking back, whether we feel like this was a good thing or not. But I think for fans, this last Quantumania trailer had some elements that I think give you some really big picture clues. And now you've got the promotional tour starting. So we've got Kevin Feige, we've got Jonathan Majors, really for the first time talking about the character, the villain, how it's gonna fit in. And yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, a lot to cover, but yes, I do think Pablo's grand call, for those of you who missed it, is that Secret Wars will ultimately reset the MCU and thereby open the door for recastings of the original phase one, phase two, phase three characters. And I actually think that the MacGuffin that was revealed, it seems like in this trailer, actually does point to that. So we'll rewind. First of all, what do you think of the trailer? I mean, I, we've generally liked the first two. What do you think of the last one, which was, a, you know, a little more dramatic, shall we say? I, mean, I want to see this performance, Brian. I want to see what the Marvel execs and the people that have been working on this project are so hyped about with regards to Jonathan Majors uh, being the one that's going to be doing the heavy lifting for the next few years, up until Kang Dynasty and perhaps even Secret Wars. Um, and this showed a little bit more, a little bit more as to understanding why someone like Kang, the Conqueror, would require the help of Ant-Man. We, we, so I'm interested, Brian, in seeing how this is all going to play out because obviously the mystery is still there as to what Ant-Man is going to have to do to help Kang. Um, is certainly going to reveal to the circumstances as to why Kang is in the quantum mania uh, or in Acropolis in this city. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of revelation, Brian, as to the past and the future. So we can, it's funny, we, Kevin made a comment about this that reaffirmed something that we knew the second we heard Kang, the character, was going to be in this movie, which is we said, Ant-Man's moving on up. Move, got the call to the big leagues. And Kevin said it. He said it straight out. He said, why is Quant someone asked him, why is Quantumania the leadoff film in phase five? And he said, because Ant-Man earned it. Like, that's <laughs> straight up. He's just like, Ant-Man deserves to be on the first, like the first level, basically. Yeah, so we yeah. gave him this, this film. And I think that's not just a, 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 a Paul Rudd comment. I think that's a Peyton Reed comment, the director. I think it's also the collective. You know, it's interesting. I think I think you and I maybe underrate this a little bit. I'd be curious to like what your son thinks, but like my daughter is very fascinated by Ant-Man, like, of, 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 like away from the, you know, cap and sort of the truly big names that have been established. She's fascinated by Ant-Man and like, I. I think maybe there is an element that we underrate of like Ant-Man does appeal to a younger audience, like maybe more so than we realize. So, um, so I think that's, that's a factor, but no, let's jump into the MacGuffin, the forever crystal. Yes. Not named I've, I've heard trailer, this a few times, but don't clear, know what it is. 
very clearly is there, this is the MCU version of the Forever Crystal. How do we know? Two reasons. So one is Michelle Pfeiffer in the trailer, Janet Van Dyne saying basically that if Kang gets a hold of this thing, basically he can control anything and everything. Kevin Feige confirming in the press, in the press tour that the Kang we're going to see in this has effectively lost, ha, had this crystal and lost it. And as a result, no longer has his power to do anything, go anywhere or any when. So if it's not named the forever crystal, it is the forever crystal. And that is a big deal. Why? In the comics, the forever crystal is created in the future by Nathaniel Richards, the father of Reed Richards, actually to save a future Earth. But it effectively is a multiverse, temporal shattering, all powerful device. It allows you to control multiple realities. So that this clearly will be the infinity gauntlet of this cycle. Okay. Uh, we also know because the trailer itself, and I texted you this, the text they overlaid in the trailer was witness the beginning of the dynasty. There is nothing in that statement about Ant-Man. Just witness the beginning of what we know is the Kang dynasty. So it's this, it is Ant-Man as we suspected doing something personal for himself, but inadvertently jeopardizing the entire multiverse. So we can safely assume that some version of Kang is gonna walk out of here in possession of this device, which he can then use to effectively control and um, dictate terms over the course of the Kang dynasty, which then naturally leads you to, how do you get to see a secret wars that makes sense? How do you get to a place where Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans and friends appearing actually makes storytelling sense? Well, here it is, because in the comics, this is exactly what happened. Avengers Forever was a run of comics in which several series of Avengers kind of formed up, met, collided, and I, I think, and some were good, some were evil. Um, and ultimately, actually in that series, that version of Kang kind of wound up being more for good than for bad, but he was actually fighting another version of himself, which I don't, which I think also lends itself to what Marvel's trying to do here. So there was like, Kang was not an, a villain in the comics. Immortus was a variant of Kang who, kind of seized the crystal and was trying to basically use it to rewrite the multiverse. Sounds pretty familiar to me. I mean, that sounds like generally speaking what they're trying to do here, but a big deal because it links to Fantastic Four in a very kind of transparent way. And it links to Secret Wars in a very transparent way. So yeah, I mean, I think the fact that they showed that in the trailer must have been really aimed at the fandom to be like, look, here it is. We're not gonna, we, we respect your intelligence. Here's what it's the central item is gonna be. So what 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 makes you think this is? So you think with this forever crystal, he is going to wipe out everything, and we're going to start from the beginning, right? So, or at so, least I think it, it it makes it it makes it a more natural way to do that, if that makes sense. If there is a device that is understood that has the ability to do something like that, so I think in its first in, in Avengers Forever, it wound up being like three main realities that were set up uh, that were competing. And it wound up being Cap at the end, of course, who kind of saves the day or saves the day and then is faced with the choice of actually something that the MCU already did, which was in that case, that Cap basically had his chance to rewrite his own history, right? With Peggy and with all that, so, and all the time he lost. And he chose not to. He chooses to destroy the crystal to prevent it from threatening the multiverse again. Um, now, MCU already gave Chris Evans that like second run at history, so they can't really do that. But what I thought was interesting is, like I said, I think having heroic versions of Avengers and villainous versions of the same Avengers solves a potential problem for Kevin Feige, which is not every one of the original cast is probably going to want to come back if they're playing the same part they did before. So this will allow him to pitch anyone who's reluctant well you can you can be an evil version of yourself now you could be any any different type of cap you or, don't have to play or, the same person or, yeah i think that's a business decision to make sure everyone comes to the table 
in some form or fashion. And if they don't, like, let's say, let's say Chris Evans is like, I only want to be evil cap. Well, now you have an excuse to do something that unfortunately we find Kevin Feige doing a lot of. What celebrity can I get to play a heroic Steve Rogers from another multiverse for a bit, right? It's like, I think you could, you're going to see some of that. And I think that gives him an excuse to kind of do that and have an even bigger lineup for the final showdown, which sounds like he wants to kind of try to one up Avengers assemble, which as we discussed might be risky, but this particular comics run effectively did it effectively did what he seems to be trying to do. So I think it all signs kind of point to we're hatching that. Um, and I think the other thing in the comics, which I think is interesting is Kevin Feige confirmed, we have not seen the last of a good Kang because he says Kang is part of the reason he's a different kind of villain is Kang is fighting himself as much as he's fighting our heroes. Direct quote. Also a, a very uh, interesting scene when it happens. The good and the I good. I think so. Good, right? That conversation, what's it going to be like? So that's what I mean. That's why I think like he who remains was supposedly a benevolent version of Kang, but it implies there might be a heroic and outright heroic Kang that's out there. Maybe like we don't know why this Kang, who clearly is evil, and maybe that's the thing is they have not referred to this Kang as Kang the Conqueror. I know he looks like Kang the Conqueror, but like I told you, Immortus was the name of the villain that was in um, Avengers Forever, and we've also heard they might even make the Beyonder a variant of Kang as well. So who's to say that like, we don't hear Kang's name in the trailer. I'm, I'm curious to see if this character goes by the name of Kang or whether we find out that he was put there by another variant of Kang and that's why he can't get out. So I think it kind of opens up a lot of, a lot of lanes, if you will. Uh, very complex storytelling, but it opens up a lot it of lanes is. for- It is, especially for fandom um, who want the Beyonder to be what the Beyonder is from the comic books, right? They don't want this other, you know, they did it with the, the time authorities, those three figures. Those are real characters so, in the comic books. Ironically, or coincidentally, the timekeepers are a major force in Avengers Forever, the real ones. Like those three actually are major factors. So it does tie you to the Loki series as well, in which case you might find out that there are actual timekeepers not puppets as we kind of saw in that series you can also get something that is beyonder true to the beyonder because the beyonder's first appearance he effectively snatches all the avengers and teleports them to like another world for like a gladiatorial combat that sounds a little bit like something you could stage in secret wars if you were wanting to you know use the beyonder without maybe they don't even call him the beyonder in this we don't know that but if you wanted to use that character's dna it mm. it's there i mean you could sort of see how this would all tie together and why it is pretty ambitious but this movie has to work for that to yes. get there how i mean i know i know we're still a long ways before we get this um reboot but how do you think fans will receive this notion of that possibility of a uh, reboot. And I, and I think Brian, this also lends itself to the, the, to, um, removing the, I guess, a distraction of what the MCU was and, uh, introduces a whole new world for the mutants, right? Um, yep. for the focus to be on them and not necessarily where are these guys? So I don't know how they're going to make that transition over to that without uh, these other guys. It's going to be very interesting, Brian. But your thoughts on, on on what people think, you think people will feel about this recast? And do you think there will be some time after Secret Wars or the finale of Secret Wars before we get another movie? Uh, I, I know it's, it's, it's still far away, but what are your thoughts on that whole scenario? I think people will be ready for it. I mean, like I said, I don't, you know, we, 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 it's just weird to me that like we transition from Batman to Batman to Batman and nobody bats an eye. And then mm -hmm. like with this, it's like we, you know, somehow we can't have another Iron Man and we can't have another Steve Rogers. And we, of course we can. Like I, I think people are fine with it. I think 
you know, I think, like I said, I think this will give an opportunity for some of those original actors to die in a way that they are in some cases, if that's the, what they want to do, or, you know, go to another multiverse never to be seen or heard from again for, for years. So yeah, that's the, that's the, the, the essence of comics is, is yeah. birth and rebirth. And yeah, I think that the end of Avengers forever, there is this to the point about wiping things out. You know, when they when they do the, they do a reset basically, like everyone gets returned to their respective timelines, but then they basically have no memory of anything. They have no memory of the incident, right? So that's the wipe, right? Is a kind of like everything that happened prior to that basically just becomes a void, yeah. and like it, life goes on almost like from day one as if it never happened. And that's what I mean by it feels like you're going to be right that like somehow out of this there will be a a rebirth of like. Yeah, we reintroduced the character and someone else has got the shield and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's that was always our Steve Rogers. And nobody knows that Chris Evans was actually Steve Rogers for the last however many years. So I I think it all fits. Um, but and I think fans will be fine. I like I said, you, you know, you, you love the characters and that's great, but it's like you know, we, we went we went through with Hugh Jack. You can't do it forever. <laughs> nobody can yeah, do it forever. I, 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 some, at some point you're hurting your own legacy by doing it. So yeah. Um, I'm making a prediction. Uh, they, they didn't do it in Endgame. There was a lot of predictions prior to the film of who was going to go. Right. Um, I was putting my money on cap. Yep. Uh, cause I, I thought they were going to do something gut wrenching and that would have been gut wrenching. I think they're going to do it this time around with secret wars. It, you know, if that transpires, if they go that route, I think they're going to, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah, because yeah, there were yeah. remember there were Kevin said there was a version of Endgame where every single original Avenger dies. I think he's gonna basically be like, I'm doing that. <laughs> this time I'm doing around. that this time. I'm doing yeah. it this time. Yeah, I think that's right. That's gonna be very interesting. Yeah. Now, there's another conversation. Oh, I gotta ask you, Brian, with China reopening, they're gonna show Marvel <laughs> films now. What do you think of the prospects for Quantum Mania to hit a billion this time? This is I'm a big movie, below. Brian. I this get it. A... You're, I'm still below. I'm still below. I, I'm still below in part because I feel like the Marvel Halo is damaged. And so I feel like this film has to do some rebuilding. Pablo is correct. Uh, and within the last couple of days, China confirmed that they will release Wakanda Forever uh, several months, obviously, after it's been in U.S. theaters. But Ant-Man will come out the same day as the U.S. So this will, you know, after... Avatar Way of Water uh, has made, I think is going to make over $300 million there. Um, this will be the first Marvel film since before the pandemic, since since Endgame. Uh, no, since um, uh, Spider-Man 2, Far From Home, uh, was, was day and date. So it'll help. I mean, I went back and looked. The first two Ant-Man movies made about 100 to 120 million in China. Obviously, be looking for a little bit more than that if you can, especially with China formally reopening. My only thing with getting to a billion of those, when you break down the numbers, Ant-Man domestically has been a 180 to 220 type of movie. So no doubt this will be bigger. But even if you got to like 300, which would be a very large leap. Um, and then you say, okay, they, they do 600 international. Now you're still at 900. It, it just feels like it's a very big mountain to climb when you're coming off a year where none of those films were able to get to a billion so i'm still going to say more on the eight you know eight ish range between eight and nine um and it's going to take great review great reviews you know marvel you know, marvel hasn't had a movie score in the 90s since i believe shang chi was 91 and then no way home obviously if you count that was was way up there 96 97. Yeah. so i think this one's going to have to be in the 90s for people to really even kind of consider going two, three times, but, um, but yeah, look, I mean, they're betting big on it. There's no question. When I saw the forever crystal and then like saw, heard some of the comments after I'm like, okay, everything we knew about this movie in terms of Marvel raising the stakes has been confirmed. So like they need this thing to mm -hmm. land and hit <laughs> and 800 is a hit. I want to be clear. A yeah, billion yeah. is not the benchmark for yeah, yeah, big yeah, hit yeah. for this 800 is, will be more than enough. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the prospects of a billion dollars for Quantum Mania and what do you think about the 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 new clues that's being revealed in the trailers and what Kevin has said. What do you think about the possibility of a reboot? Um, is that possible now with some of the some of what you know now? Uh let us know in the comment section below. Did, oh, we'll see. did you well, think yeah. 
Sorry, last question for you. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? There's been a thing going around that somehow Scott Lang is going to die in this movie. Do you think that's true? I don't. I didn't get that from the trailer, but um, that's going <clears> around. <throat> or a, I guess a. Ver, I guess in this case would be a the version of Scott Lang we know is going to die. I'm assuming a version would come back later. It's um, it, it's possible. I mean, to me, whether he lives or dies, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if he lives, he lives. So what? Uh, you know, I, I care about uh, what the future will hold. Certainly, the, it'll it'll be uh, an emotional reaction for for to see that happen to him. But I'm more concerned about the story and what the future holds after this movie. I think he lives. I think Janet Van Dyne dies. I, I, there is the wasp a quote from michelle original wasp michelle pfeiffer's character dies ah okay there's a okay. quote because she has a quote where she says my character has a long history with kang and then like there's something that like the original wasp is well known as a freedom fighter in the microverse i have a feeling this is setting up for her to die as the sacrifice okay okay you hear to hear people are saying that scott lang is gonna perish uh, Brian is saying that's not going to happen. It's going to happen to Van Dyne. That's, that makes sense because, I mean, what's the purpose of continuing her character, really? If you ask yourself, right? Come on. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Energy Report.